Welcome in everybody to Fantasy Pros. This is the Fantasy Football Podcast. It is me, Joey P, Joe P. Zapia, and we are back with another NFL mock draft special. This time, two rounds, and this time is going to be a little different because I like to shake things up here. We've got Andrew Erickson in the chair. Nice to see Andrew back again. D-Bro, we sent him away for the weekend. We're tired of him. Oh my God, Derek Brown, that guy. But Scott Bogman still here. Thor Nystrom still here. Erickson, you're such a bright individual. We had a great idea that uh, you brought over here to the table, which is, hey, let's do a little mock draft this time with the first round looking a little bit more the way Vegas sees it. So Erickson, talk us through that process a little bit. Set the stage for the people. So basically what we're doing is we're going to be drafting based on the favorites that the Vegas odds are implying. So When you're looking at, okay, there's a player that's favored to be the number one overall pick. That's the player we're going to go with. Second pick, third pick, fourth pick, etc. That's how it's going to be playing out with some of those picks between the top 10. And then when it comes to some of the positions linked up to certain teams, you know, for example, like the New York Jets, you know, they have they're at the lowest odds to select a offensive lineman with their first pick. So we're not even going to consider any other position. We're going to consider whatever the team is favored to pick at that specific spot and kind of see how things kind of shake out when it comes to, well, if everything goes according to how Vegas would project it, how does the draft actually end up, you know, taking out and playing out? So I think it'll be interesting to kind of see what it looks like when it's all said and done. Vegas usually pretty good. That's why they build those big hotels. Typically, they get it right most of the time. Also, Thor Nystrom, you get it right most of the time, too. Thor and I will be live on Thursday and Friday, the nights of the draft, bringing it to you right here on Fantasy Pros. Make sure you subscribe. Ring the bell for notifications, too. We're going to be live. Thor, how excited are you, not just for one night with me, but two back to back? I mean, that's like your dream come true, right? Oh man, can't wait. Yeah, we're and we're within two weeks now. So yeah, the, you can start to feel the heat now. And Scott Bogman, I just got back from two nights of WrestleMania. I finally mostly have my voice back. I would like to institute a new rule where we have a Money in the Bank briefcase where some other NFL team can cash in at any moment, hit another GM over the head with the briefcase, (laughs) cash in and make the pick for their team instead of the team that was going to pick. What do you think? You think that's a good idea? Will it work? I think we should do it. Uh, I think it should absolutely happen. But there's no way whoever is holding one, one doesn't get hit over the head every single year uh, with that pick. So, well, uh, but some, I like some it. franchises are cheaper than others. We know that not everybody <laughs> wants to pay up. You know, they might be hitting somebody on the head just to move out of certain picks. Goodness knows the Panthers can't pick for the life of God. All right, let's get uh, into the first big overall, which does seem like a foregone conclusion every single time. Thor Nystrom, you're up for the bears with the number one pick. What do you have? Caleb Williams. Next. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing left to do there. All right. Washington Commanders up at two. Scott Bogman, let's go to you. Yeah, I mean, there's not even a bet for position here. It is just a player. It's between Daniels and Drake May. Jaden Daniels has the best betting odds. Let's go with Jaden Daniels to Washington. Probably fits Cliff Kingsbury a little better as well. And I'm so happy that Andrew Erickson is here. My fellow compatriot. My fellow patriot. Uh, Go ahead. Make the pick for the Pats at three. Together in misery. Uh, together in, you know, no, no, we're turning the pages here. We're not going to trade out, right, Erickson? We're not going to trade out. No, we are not trading out. We're going to take a quarterback. We're going to take Drake May. He is currently the favorite to be the number three overall pick. But the odds are starting to get a little bit more narrow between him and J.J. McCarthy as the steam starts to pick up. So we'll see. Question for you, because I know you haven't been on a lot of these shows with us here in the last couple of weeks. Erickson, I see some people saying, you know, the better long-term investment might be Drake May of all three of these quarterbacks, stylistically speaking. Is that something you buy into? I would agree with that. I think that, you know, we look at some of his intangibles, you look at his age, you look at the Josh Allen, Justin Herbert comparisons. Yeah, I think that he maybe has like the highest ceiling in the long term. But, you know, is he going to be ready to start week one for the Patriots? Probably not. Like I would, if they were to draft him, I would not want him to start week one. Like, I would be fine with run with Jacoby Brissett. If you have another high pick next year. And, and that way they can keep the offensive nucleus, which, especially the coaching staff, intact. Because what happens if Drake May balls out rookie year? Oh, well, Alex Van Pelt's just going to get hired by somebody else. And then he's got to learn a whole new offense. So I, I think that if he were to go to the Patriots, that he would sit for the majority of the season. All right, next up at four, we have a trade. Every time we do one of these shows, it seems like the Minnesota Vikings keep moving up higher and higher and higher. I'm waiting for them, one of these shows, to move up to one to take J.J. McCarthy with Thor on the clock here. (laughs) But uh, here we go. So the trade is the Cardinals getting the 11 and the 23 here. The Vikings moving up to pick number four. Thor, what might be doing at four? (laughs) 
<laughs> We're taking J.J. McCarthy. We're sending J.J. McCarthy to Minnesota. Very good fit for KOC's offense. And if it, the top three goes like this, the Vikings have obviously been working the phone lines. Quasi had a press conference in town here, com- coming to you from Minneapolis, had a, pr- a press conference in town here uh, last couple days where he was uh, sort of t- talking about the trade up possibility, but but also dancing around specifics. But he made it pretty clear that they are working the phones hard. So, yeah, they, they, they can get up in position here, get the QB4 off the board. In this case, J.J. McCarthy happens to be a very good fit for KOC's offense. And you're working that poncho pretty hard today. If you're watching Thanks. on the YouTube channel, there's not a lot of people I know <laughs> yeah. who can pull off the poncho. <laughs> Thor Nystrom's one of them, folks. He just yeah. is. It's, it's the magic that is Thor. Number five, the Los Angeles Chargers, Bogman. We heard uh, Harbaugh talk a lot about building with offensive line, how important offensive line is. Well, now he's sitting there at five, and there's an offensive lineman that people think could be a guy could be an all pro for 10 years on the board. Is that the direction they go? Yeah, this was tough because the positional odds say offensive line, but the player odds say wide receiver. But we decided let's go ahead. It is Jim Harbaugh after all. Let's take Joe Walt. Let's stick him on this team. We know they're going to want to run the ball, uh, you know, 70 to 80 times a game. Uh, That's why McCarthy doesn't have a full evaluation because he wasn't throwing in the third and fourth quarter as much as other quarterbacks. There's not as much film of him throwing the football, uh, which makes him a little bit of a sleeper here. So uh, give Joe Walt to this line, build from the inside out. That's what Harbaugh does. Erickson, that puts the Giants up at six, and you're on the clock. Yeah, they're going to go with a wide receiver here. They're favored to take a wide receiver, and now they can pick any of the bunch that they want. So whether it's Neighbors, whether it's Odunze, but in this situation, it's easy for them. They're going to take Marvin Harrison Jr. From Ohio State, he's already the best wide receiver Daniel Jones has ever played with from day one. That is true. That is true. Why Harrison over Neighbors? Just curious. Is that how you see it? You think this is just how... Vegas sees it or just how the scouts have it. Like, do you see a difference here between those two or you think it's Harrison always going first no matter what? I think it does depend if it's the Cardinals that's picking the first receiver. They may have a different flavor when it comes to who they want. I think that when it comes to Marvin Harrison Jr., you're looking for a guy that could be potentially like a Michael Thomas, A.J. Green type of possession receiver where it's like you can just feed this guy as many targets as, human, as possible. Like he's just a guy that can move the ball down the field. Like it doesn't need to be the explosive, flashy plays, yards after the catch like a neighbor's. The Giants just need a wide receiver that functions as an actual <laughs> alpha. Like, that's what they need. And Marvin Harrison, I think, has the highest floor of the bunch. The floor and the uh, the bar, I should say, is also set very low here for Giants wide receivers. The <laughs> yeah. Titans up at seven. Floor Vegas says offensive line. What say you? Yeah, at a minus 275 clip on the juice there for the Titans taking an offensive lineman first, that it, that falls in line with what I've been hearing. They, they have been sniffing hard around this offensive line class. We're going to send them to Lisi Fuaga because in our exercise, we're going by the odds. Uh, Fuaga, uh, for this pick, has lower odds than than a couple of those other offensive tackles that are still available. But there's a lot of dissension about who is offensive tackle two in this class, and I've heard some whispers that Tennessee might like Mr. Fashanu a bit more than mm. than maybe some of these other guys. Something to keep an mm. eye on. But if if Alt is off the board, they're going to have an interesting decision between some of those different guys. Would they move back, possibly, thinking they can get one of these two tackles in the top ten? Certainly a possibility, yeah. And, and the difference between Fashanu and then a couple of those other Fuaga, Latham, Fuaga and Latham are going to be very good starting right tackles in the NFL, as is uh, Mims from Georgia, whereas Fashanu offers the possibility of a long-term solution at left tackle. I have some questions about his game with regards to the run game and the power in that, you know, and, and the technique. Sometimes he lunges into contact a little bit, but a very natural feel for pass protection. Hasn't given up a sack the last couple of years. Now, the eighth pick now belongs to the Arizona Cardinals, Scott Bogman. Uh, let's talk about what the Cardinals will do now that they move back a little bit. Yeah, they're good. They move back, but then they traded up with Atlanta here uh, to get to this spot, one spot in front of Chicago. And we still know that the Cardinals need a wide receiver. And let's give them Malik Neighbors, the second best on the board on most. I kind of. I flutter between Harrison and Neighbors. They do different things. I feel like I like Neighbors a little more, but Harrison's a little safer. I don't know. You're splitting hairs, but they get Neighbors. They get one of the top two wide receivers off the board, and they traded back and still got – they traded up 
back and then up. This is what we saw the Cardinals move all around last year. Mm -hmm. uh, would not be out of the realm of possibility here, but uh, they take Malik Neighbors and finally get a really good target. I like this. We got a lot of movement going on in this first round. Bogman, I'm going to stay with you, though, for the ninth pick here, which belongs to the Bears. Yeah, I mean, look, I'm sniping myself here, but uh, let's take Roma Dunze uh, for the Bears. I personally, if this is a, what Scott Bogman would do draft, I would take a edge rusher here for this team and wait on a wide receiver because they got two really good ones. But the betting odds say wide receiver. So let's go with Roma Dunze. All right. That brings us to the 10th pick, which belongs to the New York Jets. Thor, that pick belongs to you. The odds boards say Brock Bowers, and pretty heavily that that's you know this has become a very popular pick in mock drafts. So we're going to send Brock Bowers to New York. I I don't think though that uh, it is the fixed outcome. Maybe that that some are are getting closer to thinking that it is. If Roma Dunze is here, they're going to turn the card in really quick. So mm -hmm. th that you know the trade up was necessary. Uh, and offensive line, they're sniffing hard around that too. So Bowers is an interesting case where where the band of outcomes could be a little bit more uh, because of the position that he plays. But the odds board say Brock Bowers. That's certainly where the public sentiment is. So we're going to send Bowers to the Jets. Interesting there. Uh, number 11 now belongs to the Atlanta Falcons. Erickson, first of two picks in a row for you. What do the Falcons take here? I would assume we're going defense. Yeah, so the Falcons are favored to take a defensive lineman. You know, if you look at the odds for the eighth overall pick, it's Dallas Turner, you know, because they're connecting the dots. But in this situation, you know, Atlanta is going to probably be able to trade back and still pick the player that they want the most, that they would take at eight because of these teams that are going to be trading up, whether it's for a tackle, whether it's for a wide receiver. The Falcons are in a good spot to trade back in this draft, so they're going to get the guy they would have taken anyway, Dallas Turner, pass rusher out of Alabama. All right, next up is the Denver Broncos, Erickson, so back to you for back-to-back. -back. Well, you know, this one is so <laughs> funny to look at because the odds are all saying that the Denver Broncos are going to draft Bo Nix at some point <laughs> during this draft, and they don't have any second-round picks, so I'm trying to figure out, well, are they going to wait till round three to take Bo Nix? Again, obviously, there are scenarios where they get picks, but where are they going to trade back? Who's trading up to get to Denver spot and for what reasons? By the time they pick all the top three receivers are going to be gone. There's still plenty of tackles available. So why is a team wanting to help Denver and giving them more picks? Like, I think they're going to let Sean Payton squirm and they're going to be like, well, take Bo Nix. Go for it. And that's what's going to do here. So Bo Nix, number 12 to the Denver Broncos. Congrats. That's uh, going to be a gamble. That's for sure. Uh, if you like wagering, and I know you do, the NBA season is in full uh, swing right now, and you can't get enough of the on-the-court action. And if you want to spice things up here, you could do that with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NBA. Right now, new customers bet just 5 bucks and get $150 instantly in bonus bets. We've got NBA coverage on our Betting Pros channel every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, all over the place. I know it's also playoff time here. We've got hockey going. We've got MLB going. We've got a lot going on in the wagering world, and the best way to get involved in it, of course, is to download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use that promo code FANTASYPROS when you do, and new customers bet 5 bucks, get $150 instantly in bonus bets only at DraftKings Sportsbook, with that promo code Fantasy Pros, the crown is yours. Let's crown a pick here for the Las Vegas Raiders at 13. Thor Nystrom, you have the pick. The Raiders and uh, in particular their head coach Antonio Pierce would like nothing more than to trade up for Jaden Daniels. Antonio Pierce brought him, helped bring him into Arizona State uh, via the recruiting trail. And a couple of the other staff members there were involved with that as well. In his early years there, it just feels like it's going to be cost prohibitive. And if, if that ends up being the case and they're stuck back here, uh, you don't want to do what your division mate just did and egregiously overdraft a quarterback. So Olu Fushanu, who we talked about just a little bit ago, is the pick for the Raiders. There are a bit of polarizing opinions about Olu in NFL circles. You know, I, I talked about how the pass protection is awesome. He has a natural feel for that. The run game stuff, not as much, but he's the only other guy besides Joe Alt that you project to potentially be a good long-term starter at left tackle. So at 13, the values there, Raiders take him. He's the third tackle off the board, which brings up the Saints at 14. Now, Bogman, the Saints also minus money here, minus 250 for them to take a tackle. Do they? Yeah, look, we're going with the betting odds here. And I hate the Saints because I can't figure out what they want to take in the first round. There's so many ways for them to go. Uh, I think offensive line is 
probably were narrowing it down to being the most obvious need on this team. Trevor Penning was bad. Ryan Ramchek is old and had hip surgery. Um, so let's go with JC Latham. He's a plug and play guy for them. He could start at right tackle immediately. And uh, also the betting odds say O lineman. So it makes it an easy fit here. The Colts at 15. Andrew Erickson, you're on the clock. Yeah, the Colts are favored to take the first cornerback here off the board. So I'm, they're going to go with Quinny Mitchell from Toledo. And it kind of aligns with Chris Bowett's track record when it comes to drafting athletic guys, like especially at defensive back, Quinny Mitchell, 4-3-3, 40-yard dash. So second fastest among the cornerbacks that tested at the combine. So I think that this is a no-brainer for them to help shore up that secondary with Mitchell. That brings us back to Thor Nystrom for 16, and that's the Seattle Seahawks. Going to send Oregon center Jackson Powers Johnson to Seattle. Seattle has been eschewing their interior offensive line the past couple of years uh, in deference in some cases for uh, luxury picks. This this could be the year where they finally address that with a real measure. I'm talking both centers and guards. Uh, Jackson Powers Johnson, fortunately, can do both. He was a convert to center. So, I mean, you could potentially do it either way. Graham Barton would be another guy that would be under discussion here with the position versatility to potentially slide to any of those three spots on the interior. But we're going to give them Jackson Powers Johnson. I'd say that they will take an offensive lineman in the first round. All right, next up, the Jaguars at 17 Boggs. The odds are suggesting a corner. Do they go and address the defensive backfield? Yeah, Erickson and I uh, talked about this pick, and we came to the realization that Balky, his number one favorite trait is arm length, for whatever reason that is. TJ Tampa has a very big wingspan, uh, one of the the you know lengthier, I think it's 78 and 5 eighths was his uh, wingspan, one of the lengthier CBs in this class. It fits a need. I think it all works very well. TJ Tampa jumps into the first round for the Jags. Erickson, I don't know how long your arms are, but hopefully long enough to get this next pick in. At 18, the Cincinnati Bengals are up on the clock. Again, <laughs> offensive line seems to be what we always go to whenever we have the Bengals coming up in the first round. Does that trend continue? Yes, and we're going to go with Troy Fatanu out of Washington. Has experience playing tackle. Also could kick inside if they need him at guard. Just gives the Bengals some more flexibility across the offensive line to help keep Joe Burrow upright. And as you guys are starting to notice here, like a lot of teams are favored to take offensive linemen. So we're starting to see these this position dry up real quick. Yeah. Uh, you know, just keep feeding your kids. Just keep feeding them, making them big boys. <laughs> and hopefully they get a big contract someday in the NFL. The Rams with a first-round pick, something we don't see very often. At 19, <laughs> Thor, they're on the clock. Obviously a huge gap to fill there uh, with Aaron Donald leaving. That's where Vegas sees they're going to go. Maybe they surprise us. What do you think? The rare first round pick for the Rams, and this is the bonanza scenario for the Rams. There has been no interior defensive lineman taken yet, which means Byron Murphy of Texas is still available for the Rams to slide into maybe not the, the shoes of Aaron Donald, but certainly the position that he played. I The more you watch Byron Murphy, the more you appreciate his game. Uh, he's a guy, he's one of those twitchy three techniques that shoots the gap and gives you the interior pressure. But there's a little difference between him and some other guys of like that ilk, which is he keeps gap integrity on running concepts and he will occupy. And it's really difficult to move that dude when he sets his feet in the ground and then he, he's just standing you up and then your linebackers can flow. So I, I appreciate his game. It's it's grown on me more and more as the process has gone. Would seem to be a very good fit for the Rams in a post-Aaron Donald world. Certainly would seem like a good fit. At 20, Bogman, who's a good fit for your Pittsburgh Steelers? Oh, give me the monster, Amarius Mims. I would love to see him in a Steelers uniform. Slide Broderick uh, over to the left side. Just get Dan Moore out of the starting lineup, please. Uh, center is a big need here as well, but uh, I think Amarius Mims uh, being available would be an easy plug-and-play for the Steelers. It's Arthur Smith, right? They're going to want to run the ball a million times. Cordell Patterson has already been brought in to mess with this uh, Najee Harris, Jalen Warren stack, of course. We know what Arthur Smith is all about, and it's running the football. What could go wrong? Uh, the Miami <laughs> Dolphins at 21. Erickson, uh, lots of offensive linemen flowing off the board. Do we continue to see that trend uh, here with the Miami Dolphins as well? Yes, because we are just blindly following the betting markets. And they say Miami's got to draft an offensive lineman. So that's the situation and the approach we're going to go with here. So for me, it's going to be Graham Barton from Duke. 
He's has experience playing all five positions across the offensive line. So Mike McDaniel can literally do whatever he wants with him. Again, most likely going to be any either a guard or center, but just bolstering that offensive line help protect Tua. All right, so Erickson selects an offensive lineman for the Dolphins. The Eagles up at 22. That goes back to Thor. We're going to give, speaking of the offensive line, and and fortunately, it's a very deep class there, especially in the first two days. We're going to send the Eagles Tyler Guyton of Oklahoma. I'm a little bit lower on him. I, I have him as my eighth tackle, but I, I certainly understand the people that love Tyler Guyton, and I think he's going to go fairly high. Like I think he's going to go around this range. Because the flashes that you see from him are great on the film. And then he also is almost 6'8", 322, 97th percentile athlete. It's just he needs work on the technique. Uh, last year, he had a, a 63 PFF grade. The, the play vacillates, needs to find the consistency, needs to improve that technique. But if he hits, you got a stud tackle going forward. And one of those rare guys that could play left in the NFL long term. All right. Uh, next up, we have Scott Bogman and the Arizona Cardinals at 23. This is another one that makes me squirm a little bit because I would love to take a defensive player here for the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, but the odds favor an offensive lineman. We said there's a lot that have been uh, going here, so it is getting a little thin. That's why the Cardinals may be a little Jack Reacher, a little Reachy Reachy, Christina Reachy here. They take Jordan <laughs> Morgan. Uh, the offensive lineman, we'll call him, from Arizona. Play tackle at Arizona. Uh, arms are really short. Looks more like a guard. I think that's a position he'll end up in, but it definitely helps bolster this offense a little bit more after adding a big-time wide receiver. The Dallas Cowboys at 24. Andrew Erickson, what do the Cowboys do? Uh, they're going to reach on offensive linemen because that's what Vegas is telling us to do. <laughs> so uh, this is someone I don't necessarily anticipate going to be a first rounder, but the way that we're doing this exercise, Kingsley Sumatia, it's an offensive lineman from BYU. Dallas is trying to plug the spot with Tyron Smith, who's now with the New York Jets. So again, we may potentially see in the real NFL draft where teams do potentially reach on tackles that may not be ready for day one. That would bring us to 10 offensive linemen in the first, actually 11, if you count the center as well. So, <laughs> Thor, would that be a record? Uh, you're our resident draft guru. Would 11 offensive linemen in the first round be an all-time record? Yeah, and it's a possibility uh, with how stacked this is. The, the one interesting thing to, to watch for when we get to that last Thursday night in April is, like I mentioned before, it's not only good at the top, the, the offensive line class in particular, the tackles, but through day two, and this is another thing with the receiving group of teams making the decision in the first round. Are you going to do the three-dimensional chess and hit one of your other needs early because that will drop off quicker? You know, for instance, we were just talking about the interior defense alignment. There's only two of those guys, my opinion, that could go in the first or should go in the first round. And, and then you have a, more of a teardrop like some of these other positions. But with offensive tackle, offensive line, and wide receiver, you might be able to defer that to day two and then take an immediate starter in day two. So so it'll be interesting to see the manifestation of that if, if people prioritize that or if they go to other needs in the first round. All right, Thor, let's stick with you for the next pick. It's the Packers at 25. I'm going to give uh, a, a, what would be a great pick. Uh, it would break my heart personally as a Vikings <laughs> fan who went to Iowa and has loved watching this guy the past several years. We're sending Green Bay, Cooper DeJean from Iowa. There's been report and, and Cooper DeJean, great for his draft stock. He was able to work out in front of evaluators. He tested like the stud athlete that he is coming off the knee injury that he had during the season. Wasn't sure that he was going to be able to test. So the fact that he did and tested so well locks him into the first round. The The question that, that people have been asking is, is he a safety? Is he a boundary corner? Is he a nickel? My my thing with him more is he's a chess piece dude that you can move around. Uh, especially if you play zone, absolutely he is going to be a good boundary corner in the NFL. You might want him closer to the line of scrimmage. I could see that situationally playing him at nickel. Cooper's agent is calling me now. Uh, no, just kidding. <laughs> uh, but for, for Green Bay, a team that needs general uh, secondary help, you could certainly try him across from Jair. You could try him in the slot, like I said, or you could you could move him back to safety. Their teams see him different. I think he has the versatility for all that. The other thing with him, stud punt returner. It wasn't a fair catch against Minnesota. And he will also fill a spot on your other core special teams. So you're bringing him in right away. You got Your special teams coordinator is going to love that too. 
It's fun. It's like doing a show with Ian Rappaport or something. Just right there on the phone. Any minute, <laughs> somebody can make a trade. The Buccaneers are up next at 26. Scott Bogman. Mm, I get to take a defensive player. I Thank love goodness. it. Finally, for Tampa Bay. And um, look, this is not the best defensive lineman on the board. I'm going to take them lie out to a lot to the edge rusher from UCLA. He might be the best edge rusher on the board. But if you look at defensive linemen, which is where the odds are, Johnny Newton's still on the board here. It's a little silly that he's fallen this far. But the need at edge is enormous for this team. And they're good mm-hmm. on the interior. They have Kalijah Kansi, Vita Vea, Logan Hall. So with pass rushers like Joe Tryon, Shoinka, uh, Yaya Diaby, who was good, they have a uh, they signed a veteran in Randy Gregory. They have they they have a pretty big need here. So Leatu Latu from UCLA slipping this fall to them, I think, is a very very good fit. So to complete the earlier trade, now the Falcons pick at twenty seven. That's Andrew Erickson. Yep, and the Falcons get another player that they potentially could have taken at eight overall because of the trade. They now can get this player at twenty seven. Terry on Arnold cornerback from Alabama. So I think that again, the odds are saying that the Falcons are going to take defense alignment or a cornerback in this exercise. They get both potentially top guys at each of the positions in the first round. Next up Thor, the Buffalo bills at 28, certainly a, a glaring hole there at wide receiver minus two fifty on the board right now for them to do that. So it seems like that's probably the direction the Buffalo bills go. Yeah, and boy, would this be a bonanza scenario for them uh, sitting back there in the, the post stuff on Diggs world that they find themselves in that uh, mm-hmm. the NFL in this exercise has prioritized the offensive linemen, which has filtered down the receivers. And Mr. Brian Thomas from LSU, uh, Malik Neighbors is running mate last year, is the pick for Buffalo. At worst, Brian, like th- there's questions about his evaluation because the last year when he broke out, he, you know, he's a former uh, stud recruit coming out. But then it wasn't until his last year where they started pounding him with usage. But of course, he was the second receiver to Malik Neighbors, and his usage was so specific. It was either Brian run deep, Brian come back, or you occasionally had the slant. But it was it was mostly that kind of stuff. Can he do the other stuff? He has the 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 physical package for it, right? Six three, two hundred, uh, with, with the ludicrous low four three wheels. It's just we haven't seen the full route tree from him. They just Mm -hmm. didn't ask him to do it last year, but he was awesome with what they asked him to do. So uh, super rich man's Gabe Davis at worst for Brian Thomas. But then you're you're hoping that potentially maybe even there is wide receiver one upside there. If we can develop him a little bit more, getting them running some of these other routes. I heard uh, some scouts actually talking about him this morning. I was listening to some folks and they were talking about how Brian Thomas really understands schemes very well. Like you show him something one time, he just gets it. Uh, that bodes very well, I would think, for him uh, in Buffalo. And, to maybe and Joe, one, play both one other thing, one other thing I would say about him is that breakout didn't come until the third year. But people need to keep in mind he comes out after his true, true junior season again was awesome with everything they asked him to do on mm-hmm. a per play basis. Uh, was the top three four receiver in in this class, and then the other thing is when he came in to college at LSU, they had a packed receiver room with a whole bunch of uh, NFL guys. Obviously, neighbors was was coming in. With him, but you know, you right. had yeah, Butte in that room, Palmer, Dre Jenkins. It, it was stacked with veterans as well. Brian Thomas actually got on the field early. He started eight games as a true freshman. He wasn't the, like the top dude or whatever. But then it was it was sort of the same thing as a sophomore. While that receiving room was packed, and then last year was when he got to to take one of the featured roles. But just some context, I think. No, it's good context and certainly a good landing spot for him for usage at twenty nine. The Detroit Lions, Scott Bogman. I get to take more defense here. Give me uh, Kool-Aid McKinstry to the Detroit Lions here. Uh, Obviously, Cam Sutton uh, getting in trouble gave this team a big hole. So I think they fill it with with a little bit of Kool-Aid and get a really solid corner in the secondary, which was the biggest issue for this team last season. And you can get this at plus 130 right now. So that's a pretty good number there for them to take a corner. Erickson with the Baltimore Ravens at 30. Yeah, so we have to go against Vegas a little bit here because (laughs) Vegas is projecting the Ravens to take an offensive lineman. But I I just can't look at this board and justify reaching on another tackle position, especially as I'm drafting for the Baltimore Ravens, notorious for just scooping up all the value that comes to them in the drafts when other teams value need over just the best guy on the the board. So I'm going to go with their next most favorite position, which is the the defensive line. I'm going to take Jared Verse, edge out of Florida State. The Ravens, yes, they have a whole tackle. They'll figure it out later. They can't give up on a prospect like Jared Verse this late into round one. 
Mr. BPE goes BPA for the Ravens. No surprise there at 31, the San Francisco 49ers and Thor. We're going to send Zach Frazier, the center from West Virginia, to the 49ers. The 49ers, they are going to be, they, and they have been during this pre-draft process, sniffing hard around the, the offensive linemen. The, we saw everything that happened above them on the board. Zach Frazier is in play to go in the first round. The NFL is higher on him, I think, than than I am. But when you look at the profile, uh, you can start to understand why. He was a wrestler as a kid and a star wrestler in, in high school. They love the grappling stuff. Tyler Linderbaum, you know, is a, a, a guy we had a couple classes ago that, that was a dominant high school center. The grappling translates. And then uh, Zach Frazier was also a three-time all uh, Big 12 academic selection. He's known as a leader, everything like that. The one question about him, 32 percent, 32nd percentile arm length. So it'll that, that'll be interesting to see how teams see that. That could be the differentiation between late on Thursday or early on Friday. But I know the NFL likes that kid a lot. All right, at 32, the Kansas City Chiefs, Scott Bogman. Let's end the first round on a high note. If you're going to give me uh, the last pick in the first round, I'm going to have to take a Texas player, right? So, it's, <laughs> but, but it fits a need to, uh, this team needs a wide receiver. We don't know how long Rasheed Rice is going to be out. I think... Maybe this was worthy a couple weeks ago before the Rasheed Rice news, but now I'm going to give them Adonai Mitchell, a player with a little bit more size. Uh, obviously, we know about the body control um, and uh, the hands. So I, I love Mitchell going here. I would love to see him as a number one target for uh, Patrick Mahomes. All right, the first round is in the books. Before we head to round two, if you need new tires for your car, Discount Tire is your go-to. They have exceptional service, and you get a 30% shorter average wait time when you buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. They have a really cool feature called Treadwell 2, which is an online tire buying guide that gives you transparency on tire performance, as well as personalized recommendations based on your location and driving habits. Discount Tire is also the largest independent tire retailer in the country, so it has the biggest selection of tires and wheels. And here's a pro tip from the experts at Discount Tire. You can prevent wear and boost gas mileage by keeping your tires properly inflated. Tire pressure supports the weight of your vehicle, and it's important to check it for safety. So be safe. Go out there. And if it's been over a month since you've last checked your tire pressure, go stop by one of their many local stores for a free tire safety and air pressure check. Discount Tire. Let's get you taken care of. Let's get round two taken care of, boys. Let's go with the Carolina Panthers. Andrew Erickson, kick things off here at 33 with the Panthers. Well, we're talking about tires, so we might as well talk about this guy with wheels. Xavier Worthy, maybe you heard yeah. of him. Uh, he's pretty fast. You know, uh, broke the record for the fastest 40-yard dash at the NFL Scouting Combine, and he fits what the Carolina Panthers need. The betting markets are saying the Panthers plus 115 to draft a wide receiver, so even though they already added Deontay Johnson, they need to get as many weapons around Bryce Young as humanly possible to make sure that he can actually be their franchise quarterback. So I think throwing in a guy like Worthy to kind of be the speed element to this offense with Deontay Johnson operating as a possession receiver, I think it's a good fit and can help unlock uh, more of that upside with Bryce Young in his second year. The Panthers tire metaphor, I thought you were going every pick that they make falls flat. I thought that's where you were going. I'm trying to be optimistic Man. here, Joe. Look at these upper <laughs> level and dad just, jokes that are incorporating the sponsor as well. Oh, Unbelievable. Dude, I'm just general. getting ready. Wait stuff. till we get live Thursday night on the draft. Wow. Wait till we get there. The Patriots are up next at 34. Thor, what do we do here? Talked about the three-dimensional chess to keep an eye on on Thursday and Friday night with regards to the offensive tackle, offensive line class, and then the receivers. In ours, the, the offensive lineman went earlier, the, which means the receivers, there would be a parade of them as if this is what happened in real life, just as is going to happen in our exercise. We're now going to get the third straight and fourth of the last seven picks with Lad McConkey of Georgia. Uh, Patriots fans, they, you, you, they might see this pick and then, you know, evoke uh, Wes Welker and, and Amendola and Edelman and different stuff like that. But McConkey is a guy that absolutely can play on the perimeter in the NFL. Uh, three quarters of his snaps in his career were on the on the boundary, came from a 12 personnel offense. He can certainly do slot stuff as well, but he also tested like a madman, certainly with the speed, was high four, four threes. So McConkey would go in there and and give the, the new quarterback for uh, New England, Drake May, in our exercise. Uh, an option that would get open a whole bunch, and Drake May would sure appreciate it because last year he did not have a ton of help on that UNC team. 
What, what a concept. Uh, a wide receiver can get open on the Patriots. I'd love to see it. <laughs> and Bodman knows he's scrappy, right? He's a scrappy guy. Uh, at 35, the, the Arizona Cardinals got Bogman back to you. Uh, Johnny Newton still on the board. This would be an insta pick for the Cardinals. This defense needs a lot of help. Uh, we're out of the betting odds round here, so uh, I can take the best player on the board for a defense that needs it. Look, they signed three guys to play on this line: Nichols, Tonga, and Justin Jones. I don't know. May, maybe there's a guy that should start at this level, uh, but Johnny Newton would uh, just have an influx of great play and a tone setter on this line. I think this would be a great pick. And this, these are the things that happen. You know, um, mm-hmm. if, if Vegas is right about a lot of these picks, these are the guys that start to slip a potential top 15 pick slipping into the second round because some teams are drafting based on needs. So we well, had a dozen uh, I would love offensive to see linemen go in the first round which is pretty no we did it vegas did they're the ones they're the ones that are telling us all the offensive linemen are going in round one Uh, there you have it all right erickson back to you for the commanders at 36 i'm gonna go with chop robinson edge from penn state now it's surprised that chop robinson even kind of fell into round two but that's because of the run on offensive linemen but when it comes to just like pure pass rushing talent and upside i mean there may not be a prospect that has more upside than chop robinson just an absolute freak the way that he moves his body and he has all the explosiveness the twitch that you want in a premier pass rusher and after the commanders traded away all their pass rushers last year they have to reinvest into the position so they go with chop here all right next up for the chargers at 37 that's thor we're sending Nate Wiggins, the Clemson cornerback, to the fighting Jim Harbides. Uh, th- this, <laughs> this is just a value pick here. Wiggins, a guy probably going to go in the first round, but one of those corners, there is a shot that they they get shoved out. And, you know, one of the prevailing thoughts has been that that could be Kool-Aid that that happens to. But Wiggins also is a guy that draws various opinions. Uh, like, he's tall. He has the world-class speed. You love that. Uh, technique is pretty good. But he's also on the skinnier side. And and sometimes play strength against the opposing receivers is is a different thing with him. And then helping in the run game. So it's, it's specific as to the team. But if he fell down here, this would be a bonanza value for whoever ever ended up taking him. And in this case, that is the Chargers. Thor, what's the uh, team logo for the Fighting Harbaugh's? Is it just a pair of khakis on the helmet? Is that what it it's, is? Yeah, uh, a pair of khakis and then uh, a glass of milk. Uh, okay, glass. I was going to say a jawline. Just a jawline. <laughs> and somebody uh, else's play sheet. Who's got it better than us? <laughs> oh, Nobody. Oh, Bogman throwing some smoke there. Somebody <laughs> else's play sheet. I like that. Boggs. That was really good. So why don't you make the next pick at 38 for the Titans? <laughs> uh, give me uh, Troy Flank- Franklin, the wide receiver from Oregon. And the betting odds, you know, it's far and away an offensive lineman for their first pick. But the second best odds for them is a wide receiver. And this is Callahan, right? Coming over from Cincinnati with Zach Taylor, where they picked Jamar Chase over Penny Sewell. I don't know if that's going to happen in this draft, but they want talent at that position. Uh, DeAndre Hopkins is still great, Cal- but he's old. Calvin Ridley is kind of looking like he's maybe on the back nine uh, here for his career. So let's keep some talent at this position. I love Traylon Burks coming in. I don't know if he's ever going to make it. Add Troy Franklin, give him a little more speed and a playmaker with the ball in his hands. Erickson, back to you for 39 and the Panthers. Going to go with defensive lineman Darius Robinson. Also edge interior defensive line from Missouri. The odds have the Panthers. Again, wide receiver we took earlier in round two, and now we're going to take defensive lineman because that's the next position that they're projected to take on the betting odds and with the Darius Robinson so he's someone that he was actually invited to the NFL draft so he's one of these rare guys that it's like he was kind of on that fringe of round one but with the NFL only inviting around I think it was like 15 players like they don't want another Will Levis scenario where a guy is sitting in the green room he doesn't get picked so the fact that we had Darius Robinson fall this far I mean I think this guy is going to go in round one and I know at least from my unbiased perspective that bet on Darius Robinson to be a first round pick. I hope that he doesn't <laughs> fall to the Carolina Panthers in round two. Completely unbiased. I would like to see him. If he goes in the first round, I think Detroit fits perfectly. Love to see him on the other side of Aiden Hutchinson. Could be, could be at 40, the commanders and Thor. Yeah. You probably don't think that there's any offensive tackles left. that could come in and start <laughs> right away. Uh, you'd be wrong. Uh, Patrick Paul is still out there for Houston 
And so we got to pop them for Washington right now. Washington, earlier in this exercise, took Jaden Daniels. You, you don't want Jaden Daniels behind the, the state of the offensive line as it is currently constituted. They would be prioritizing, if it's possible, to get an immediate starter there. And with Patrick Paul going in there and competing, uh, he is going to be starting from day one along with Jaden Daniels in Washington. At 41, the Packers last time, Boggs, they addressed the corner situation. Now, what do they do? Uh, let's give him Tyler Newbin, the safety from Minnesota. I just think this would be such an amazing pick. And, like, the only weakness in this defense is maybe uh, middle linebacker and safety, but they signed Xavier McKinney. So to go from uh, Darnell Savage and Jonathan Owens or whoever the terrible combo at safety was last year for Green Bay to McKinney and Newbin would be quite a coup for this defense. So I think this would be an excellent pick if he fell all the way back to Green Bay in the second. At 42, the Texans are on the clock. Andrew Erickson. Yeah, so this is their first pick in this year's draft. And they're going to go with an offensive lineman. That's who they're favored to take. I'm going to go with Roger Rosengarden, offensive tackle from Washington. He was their right tackle the last two seasons. And it's not like the Texans necessarily need a starting tackle from day one. But we saw last year all their offensive linemen basically get injured. So for me, it's like as long as C.J. Stroud is kept upright... They need to reinvest in offensive line. They got Stephon Diggs as another wide receiver addition. So I think just adding in more depth across that O-line is going to help this team potentially, you know, be a playoff and Super Bowl contender as it seems like that's what they want to be. From the earlier trade in the first round, the Cardinals now up at 43. That's Thor. I feel like I have to update people with where we are with the Cardinals because this would be their fourth pick in this exercise. So we started with Malik Neighbors, then Jordan Morgan, the offensive lineman from Arizona, and then they got Johnny Newton, got the steal earlier in this round. Now we're going to give them secondary help with Enos Rakestraw Jr. And the interesting thing, I he reminds me a lot of a guy uh, locally that used to be a Cardinal. He reminds me a ton of Byron Murphy. Uh, a, a guy where in college he was awesome and, you know, it's around six feet, but it's it's around 180 or a little bit less. And the, the long speed is, is somewhat of a question on the boundary. Um, but you know that the guy can cover and you know that he is going to help in your run support as well. So it might be a nickel thing like it, it has been uh, predominantly for Murphy in his career. But uh, the Cardinals could badly use multiple starters out there. So so this one would, would certainly help and maybe harken back to that. All right. So besides the uh, Caleb Williams going first overall, there's been one pick. I feel like every single show we've done has been the same. <laughs> and it's been the Raiders at 44. Scott Bogman, they have taken Michael Penix every single time. <laughs> what do they do this time? I'm going to change it up and give him Michael Penix. Look. All right. He, he can, Wait, I, what? First of all, <laughs> you guys give me this pick every time, right? Not they every time. Can't, not, it, I, I think every time I've been this, happened. I've done this show. I've taken Michael Penix for the Raiders at pick forty-four, right? Uh, but I just don't believe in Aiden O'Connell. I think we've seen enough of Gardner Minshew to know that his ceiling is capped at what he did last year, right? I don't think it's going to get much better than that. He does have better targets this year uh, in Devontae and Jacoby Myers. Maybe Michael Mayer will be better. But this team, it, you heard Antonio Pierce talk about it in the offseason too. You have to address the quarterback position in the NFL if you want to win games. So uh, I think this is a, like the Steelers are doing right now, leave no stone unturned. Give yourself many options at this position. And um, adding Michael Penix, this guy was amazing this year. He was so good. And I know he has an injury history. He's not the most mobile guy, but he can get the ball downfield, which is the name of the game in the NFL. So uh, I think he would fit pretty much any offense, but uh, I would like to see him here in Vegas. We're manifesting it, Boggs. That's what we're doing. Right. That's what the kids Happening. call it, manifesting it. If you want to manifest your fantasy teams, a good way to get going on that is the Mock Draft Simulator, and that tool is available right now at fantasypros.com slash simulator. It's fast, it's free, just like Scott Bogman, and it's a great way to practice any kind of draft, including dynasty startup drafts and rookie drafts. Again, that's fantasypros.com slash simulator, and that's how you get prepared for all of your mock drafts and your Drafts coming up for your dynasty leagues and rookie drafts. All right, so going next is after Scott Bogman selecting Michael Penix for the Raiders, we have the New Orleans Saints at 45 and Andrew Erickson. Yeah, so we took care of offensive tackle in the first round for the Saints, and their next position in the betting odds is defensive line. So they're going to go with the other edge rusher from Penn State, not Chop Robinson, but Adisa Isaac. He actually led 
Penn State last year in sacks and total pressures. So although Chop Robinson kind of has that freakiness about him, Isaac was the one that was actually, you know, getting some of that actual pass rushing production last year. So I think he's going a little under the radar. And I think that he's definitely going to be a round two pick. The Colts up next at 46. That's Thor. First round, we've talked about with the Colts, maybe receiver, but if they bypass that and go secondary help, but like we had in our exercise, we sent them a, a well-built, muscular corner in the first round in Quinion Mitchell. Well, now let's get an even more muscular player on the other side, the other position in need at wide receiver in the Hulk, Xavier Leggett from South Carolina. Uh, Indianapolis, uh, th- they could use a guy that could get deep. They- they've done a couple of, you know, uh, uh, different shots at that, like Alec Pierce and what have you. But with Anthony Richardson's game, you would love not only to have someone that can run under those rainbow shots that he takes, but also force the defense to play two high safeties. And then we can open up our running machinations. Uh, I think Xavier Leggett would would help out with that. And he, he sort of has a, a, a poor man's, but a sawed off uh, a DK Metcalf sort of thing to his game at, at six foot two twenty five and and just sort of a classes and also a guy coming in that will a, another guy that will play special teams on all your units for you. That's what Xavier Leggett did the four years before last year when he finally broke out. So uh, experienced special teamer and a good one. All right, so wide receiver goes off the board there. Uh, after that selection, Bogman to the New York Giants at forty seven. Yeah, look, I just want to remind everyone how mad Erickson got when he was talking about the Giants wide receiver core here, right? Yeah. Uh, adding Marvin Harrison. You just need somebody to catch the football, I believe, is how Erickson described it. And um, I'm going to give him Keon Coleman. I'm going to have them doubling up on a wide receiver here. They are pot committed to Daniel Jones. I know there's a lot of you know thought process that maybe they go and you know trade up for McCarthy or, or take a quarterback here at some point. I don't think that's out of the realm of possibility, but I think – the most logical answer is give the guy some targets to throw the ball to. So it's the worst wide receiver room in the NFL right now. So adding Marvin Mm. Harrison and then a big guy like Keon Coleman, the wide receiver out of Florida state to uh, catch the ball on short routes and take it a long way, make contested catches on bad throws as well. I think will really help this giants offense out a lot. So I got them double tapping wide receiver in the first wide receiver in the second. All right, that's two wide receivers back-to-back. Andrew Erickson, the Jags are up next at 48. Does the trend continue? Yes, we're going to make it three with Slick Rick. Ricky Pearsall from Florida. We're going to keep him in-state in with a being picked by the Jacksonville Jaguars, getting Trevor Lawrence some reliability at receiver. You know, last year it was Calvin Ridley running out of bounds, dropping the ball. Like, let's get a reliable target for Trevor Lawrence. So I like Slick Rick here to the Jaguars. Okay, so three wide receivers in a row. Up next is the Cincinnati Bengals at 49. Probably not going that route, but Thor, they go offense or defense here with this pick? We're going to go defense. I I would love to send them a tight end, but uh, right now I'm not sure if they would uh, like the value of that against some of these other guys that are on the board. We're going to send them Chris Jenkins, the starter from the defending national champion Michigan Wolverines, a guy who was a plus starter on the interior there for multiple years on those nasty, nasty defenses. He's also a fabulous athlete, a guy that was on multiple uh, Feldman freak lists. Uh, and he also, not only that, it's he's he's a freak athletically at things that we know by the data and analytics translate to successful play in the NFL on the interior. Uh, the speed, the 10-yard split, the shuttle, he's got long arms, and the productivity is there. So late in the second round, uh, the Bengals might, might have no choice but to take a guy like that. The Philadelphia Eagles at 50, Scott Bogman. Yeah, let's just copy Thor's idea and go with another national champion here. Mike Sanderson, the slot corner out of Michigan, going to the Philadelphia Eagles. And, you know, the secondary was the weak link of this defense last season. We know the defensive line is good. Sure, the linebackers have a little bit of need, but they signed Devin White. That fills a big hole there. Uh, so let's go with Mike Sanderson to potentially replace Avante Maddox as a slot corner. I think that would help out a lot for them. Next up at 51, the Pittsburgh Steelers and Andrew Erickson. They're going to go with a wide receiver who will inevitably go to the Hall of Fame because that's all the Steelers do is draft (laughs) guys in round two that become Hall of Famers. So Malachi Corley, wide receiver from Western Kentucky. A lot of people comp him to Debo Samuel. I think that is a little aggressive, but there's no denying that he's a guy that you want to just get the ball in his hands. He's a monster after the catch. And I mean, look, if, if anyone knows how to get the playmaker the ball, it's Arthur Smith. So I don't see why this could be a potential issue. 
I'm going to let that one just look a lot of passes behind the line for Russell Wilson. I think the most of any quarterback <laughs> since like perfect. 2012. So a guy that can catch the ball and run with it, I think is a perfect fit. A guy who go. can only catch screen passes. <laughs> That's well, right. Whatever. Go. Marriage made in heaven. <laughs> uh, the Los Angeles Rams are up at 52. Thor, that's back to you. I, you know, I think with the Rams, it, it's going to be infrastructure, and it depends on who, who the best guy is that, that falls down at, at the on either side of the trenches. Of course, in the first round, they had the bonanza scenario of Byron Murphy falling there. Uh, this round, uh, because of all the offensive linemen that have gone, they sort of get boxed out of that. So instead, they're going to address their edge need on defense and take Chris Braswell from Alabama. The, he And Braswell might go earlier in this round, was certainly productive on really good defenses at Alabama. He's more of the north-south attacking downhill kind of a guy. Um, but for Los Angeles here, uh, you know he can get after the passer. He had double-digit sacks last year on that Alabama team that was neck and neck with Michigan in the semifinal to go to the national title. So we're going to send Braswell to the Rams. Next up again is the Eagles at 53, Scott Bogman. Yeah, I mean, I'm going to give him another linebacker. I know people hate it, but uh, Peyton Wilson is still around. I think no doubt the most talented linebacker in this class just an extensive injury history which will make him fall a little bit but I think this is a very very good value to plug in for this defense like we mentioned before N'Kobe Dean coming off Liz Franck uh, Devin White coming in is a, a really big uh, addition here but Zach Bond and Oren Burks are the backups here so uh, I would love to see a combo of Devin White with uh, Peyton Wilson. Well, the Eagles love questionable health linebackers. We know that. At 54, the Cleveland Browns, Andrew Erickson. Yeah, the Cleveland Browns is their first pick because of Deshaun Watson. And we're going to go on the defensive line because no team is spending more on offense than the Browns because of Deshaun Watson. So <laughs> we're going to address defense. We're going to go with uh, Braden Fisk, defensive tackle from Florida State. Really productive this past year after transferring from Western Michigan. Interior disruptor and just kind of adding to that fierce Browns defensive line. That puts the Dolphins back up at 55 and Thor. I feel like Bogman has a game on these shows of where he can fit Liz Frank in. It's you know, 100% it's... a drinking game in college. Yeah. I, I just said it because country. Joe loves it so much. I do. Oh, I love I, it every time. But I, I every time I, I do a shot and it's and, and that makes for a good show. <laughs> the the Dolphins, we're going to give them edge help here because as you guys know, th that room currently, you have Chubb coming off the torn ACL. You have Jalen Phillips has his health issues. So the Dolphins could definitely use an edge defender. Braylon Trice from Washington is uh, so we're going to bring him across the country. He's not the guy with the highest ceiling. In fact, that's explicitly the reason that he is likely to fall a bit, certainly further than people maybe thought coming into the process when some saw him as a late first rounder. Uh, the athleticism and the body type, it's its not such to justify a first round pick. But here, you're going to get a very solid dude, gives you tremendous effort, has pass rushing moves. He's going to play the run. So more of a, a solid workman-like starter. Well, that's what the Dolphins could use right now with their edge group up in the air because of the health. 56, the Dallas Cowboys, Scott Bogman. We have not had one single running back selected yet. Do the Cowboys yeah. take a running back here? Nope. Uh, oh. I think this is where they take Tavondre Sweat because he is a dummy. He got a DWI and he's going to slip a little bit, I think, to maybe, you know, he may slip further than this because of his uh, DWI, but he is a massive man. He is a big need for this team as well. They drafted Mozzie Smith last year. They did not get what they expected out of him as a first-round pick. I don't know that he's dead, obviously. You know, uh, he has a much longer career ahead of him, but I think they need immediate help, and I think Tavondre Sweat can give it for at least two downs. So uh, he's never going to be a three-down guy. He's playing at 360 plus we know that but he is a difference maker outland trophy uh winner i think stopping the run is more important than finding a running back here because there are going to be running backs later in this draft okay andrew erickson at 57 with the bucks yeah the bucks have the second shortest odds to take offensive linemen after defensive line so i'm going to address it with a guard cooper bb from kansas state look Rashad white had no holes to run by last year and let's try to get him some help like he can't do it all on his own so let's open up the holes bb's a good run blocker so i like him here for the buccaneers thor at 58 that's the green bay packers 
Oh, man, this hurts because I have to give the Packers another great pick and another pick that would fill a need and also be a tremendous value. We're going back to the Big Ten and back to the national uh, title winners uh, and Junior Colson of Michigan. I think Junior Colson might be the best linebacker in this class. You know, th- there's been a lot of talk of Edger and Cooper and Peyton Wilson. Uh, even Jeremiah Trotter coming into the the process. I, I think it might be Colson in terms of the best overall dude uh, that doesn't have any holes and doesn't have, for instance, the durability questions that, that Peyton Wilson does. Uh, Green Bay here, th- some teams, as you guys know, they, they don't, they're not going to delineate value picks, uh, the higher ones to this position. The Packers have shown us, though, in the past that they absolutely will. And if, if they see Colson like I do, late second round would be great value on him. All right. So Thor makes another good pick for the Packers, which grinds his gears. The Houston Texans continue to grind at 59. Scott Bogman, that's you. Yeah, let's uh, give him a corner. Let's give him Kamari Laster, the CB from Georgia and the starting spot right now opposite of Derek Stingley is between Jeff Akuda and CJ Henderson not really trustable names if you ask me so I think uh, give them a rookie to possibly contend and take this job by the end of the year I think it would be a really good move for the Texans next up the Bills at 60 Andrew Erickson gonna go Marshawn Nealand edge rusher from Western Michigan they the Bills second short odds take a defensive lineman Marshawn Nealand has pterodactyl Arm, arm span, wingspan, 90th percentile. This guy's massive arms. So Martian Leland is the pick. All right. The pick is in there for the Bills. The pick is now up for the Detroit Lions at 61. Back to Thor. The the Michigan Wolverines, defending champs, who brought them up several times here, <laughs> they might break the record for most drafted players in, in a class. And what would be interesting is it's in Detroit. And so we better send one of those Wolverines, keep them home and, and send them to the Lions. That's what we're going to do here with Roman Wilson, the slot receiver from the Wolverines. Roman Wilson, very good player. He was hurt by the same thing of them, the Michigan flogging people and then taking them out in the fourth quarter, like uh, with McCarthy. And then also the, the run first ethos on the early downs. But on a per snap basis, a per route basis, Roman Wilson acquits himself really well against any of those guys that are outside of that first tier he's a guy that's going to come in and start immediately for a team that needs an immediate starter at wide receiver it's the pick is roman wilson three more picks remain here in round two the baltimore ravens at 62 scott bogman you know the ravens just sit and take the best player available i really like michael hall jr the defensive tackle outside of really a tweener tackle edge rusher uh from ohio state i think they can move him around a little bit as well i know they already addressed edge with jared verse but uh you know linebacker edrin cooper was still on the board i considered him but they drafted trenton simpson last year to replace patrick queen i think that's still the plan moving forward so i'll give them michael hall from ohio state the 49ers at 63, Andrew Erickson. I can go with Max Melton, cornerback from Rutgers. The 49ers had to bring in Logan Ryan last year to help in the nickel. So I think that they're going to draft a slot cornerback, someone that can play in the nickel, and that's Max Melton. He can definitely do that. Projects as a slot cornerback at the next level. And finally, at 64, the last pick of the second round, the Kansas City Chiefs and Thor. We know the Chiefs would like to get someone that could immediately challenge at left tackle. Last year's third-round pick, Wanya Morris. The first round, you you would consider it, but of course, in our exercise, so many of the tackles ended up going above the Chiefs, which caused them to defer to their receiver need, and A.D. Mitchell from Texas would make it a little bit more pressing with this pick to delineate it to an offensive tackle. Unfortunately, as we mentioned with the Patrick Paul pick, that is where the train ends, at least as far as I believe, with guys that you could project to start as rookies day one in the NFL. So instead, you have to do another development mental swing uh maybe not a guy that can challenge Morris this year but you would be hoping uh next you know the year after in 2025 and we're going to give them Koran Amagaji from Yale <laughs> been practicing a lot the offensive tackle from Yale uh, has projectable traits was good in the FCS but I not a guy that's going to be able to start immediately, like I said, but the developmental ball of clay, basically you're hoping between Morris and then uh, Amagaji, your two day two, your consecutive day two uh, tackle picks there, that one of them uh, hits because both those guys are upside swings. And, and so they give themselves a better shot of that with Amagaji. 
a fascinating snapshot of two rounds here, the way Vegas sees the mock draft going, potentially, or the real draft, I should say, going of the NFL. And of course, the actual draft will unfold on Thursday, uh, coming up in just a few weeks here. The 25th, we will be live here on the channel and the 26th as well. Make sure you subscribe to Fantasy Pros. You can watch the draft and watch us at the same time on your device. We're the perfect second screen experience. We're going to break things down from the fantasy perspective because that's what you really care about at the end of the day. And of course, Thor Nystrom, myself, and all of our rowdy friends are going to be there. So make sure you join us live for the NFL Draft, the 25th and the 26th right here on the channel. Ring the bell for notifications. Again, very important you do that. And, of course, I want to thank our uh, guests today, Scott Bogman, Andrew Erickson, and Thor Nystrom. Great stuff, as always, boys. I think the lesson here is, mamas, let your boys grow up to be offensive linemen. That'll do it for (laughs) us, but the story of the game goes on. For the boys, I'm Joey P. We'll see you next time, kids.